Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In today's video, we're going to look at a lead code problem and the problem's name is meeting rooms 3. So in this question, we're given an integer n where n represents the number of rooms and they're numbered from 0 through n minus 1. And we are also given a 2D integer array called meetings where every element inside the meetings array represents the start time and end time of that particular meeting. And each interval represents a meeting with a half closed time interval that is start is inclusive but end is not inclusive that is why there is parenthesis here and there is square bracket here and it is given that all meetings will have a different start time so all the start of i's are unique and we have to allocate the rooms for those meetings given to us in the following manner such that each meeting will take place in the unused room with the lowest number that means we have to assign meetings starting from lower to higher order rooms numbered from 0 through n minus 1 and the second rule states that if there are no available rooms the meeting will be delayed until a room becomes free the delayed meeting should have the same duration as the original meeting so for example if a meeting is delayed that means there is no room assigned to that meeting the original meeting duration should remain the original meeting should not be decreased because of this delayed time and the third rule states that when a room becomes unused that means a room which was previously occupied, if it becomes empty now, then the meetings that have an earlier original start time should be given the room. And if there are delayed meetings, among those delayed meetings, whichever meeting has an earlier original start time, that should be given precedence. And the final task is to return the room number that held the most meetings. If there are multiple rooms which held uh, most meetings, then we have to return the room number which has the lowest number. And this is the definition of a half closed interval where a which is the start time is inclusive whereas b which is the end time is not inclusive now let's take a look at these examples and see how we can solve this question so let's take the first example so these are the start time 0 1 2 and 3 and they're already sorted in ascending order let's see why it's important to sort the arrays so take this third point here there are two rooms right so this is room 0 and this is room 1 so first we assign 0 comma 10 to this room and this will be the end time i'm denoting with the end time because this is when the room 0 will be empty so this room is assigned now we are at this meeting and the start time of this meeting is 1 but this uh, meeting will end at time 10 so we can't assign this here so we have to use a new room so this meeting is assigned here with the end time of 5 so this room will be added now you can see the start time is it can't be assigned to this it can't be assigned to this so we check which is the next uh, available time so this room has a smaller waiting time and when will this room next be allocated? It will be allocated 5 plus 7 minus 2 which is equal to 10 because 5 is the current existing uh, time when it will end and 7 is this meeting if you assign to that plus 7 and this is the start time right. So it will start at time 2 so that is why you are subtracting 2 and uh, this room will be next available at time 10. This is happening because this array is sorted. If for example if this was 5 comma 7 and this uh, meeting has 3 comma 4 it says that meetings that have an earlier original start time should be given the room so if this was 5 comma 7 next meeting which we have to assign was this so this will be allocated but this meeting has a start time of 3 which is earlier than this meeting time 5 so the meeting times were 3 comma 5 3 is earlier right it is starting at time 3 so this meeting should be assigned here but here since this was appearing next this will be allocated so that is why it is important to sort based on the start times so let's take this example and see how we can solve this question so we are given n equal to 3 so there are three rooms so these are the three rooms 0 1 and 2 and now we already saw that we have to sort this input array in ascending order after sorting based on the start times the array will look like this so we sorted the array in ascending order so now let's start assigning so we start with this meeting so the first rule states that each meeting will take place in an unused room with the lowest number so initially all the rooms are unused and this is the lowest number zero so we assign meeting 1 comma 5 here and the end time of this meeting is 5 so this room will be next available at fifth minute and our task is to find the room number that held the uh, most meetings right so i create a array of the size n called meeting count so I created an array called meeting count which will count how many meetings each room has been assigned. So we have assigned uh, the first meeting in room 1 so we increment its count to 1. And we also have to keep track of the next available time of each room. So I create a array called room availability and room 0 is next available at time 5 so update this to 5. Now we finished allocating this now we go to the next meeting. 
the next meeting should start at 3 so we again start counting from this we check if this is unused no this is uh, in use it will be available next at time 5 but we need at time 3 so assign the next available lowest number room which is 1 so 3 comma 10 will be assigned to this with start time of 10 with next available time of 10 so room 1 will be next available at time 10 so room 1 we updated one uh, meeting next available time of that is 10 now we allocated this now go on to the next meeting now we start with the first room yes first room is available at time 5 outer bound is not inclusive that means the new meeting can start at the end time of this meeting 5 as both are 5 so this is the end time 5 and this is the start time 5 end time is not inclusive so this meeting can start so assign that meeting here as room 0 is available 5 comma 18 is assigned and this has an end time of 18 so this will be next available at time 18 so since we allocated that room add plus 1 to this so this becomes 2 and the next available time is the end time of the current meeting that is 18 so updated so 5 will be updated to 18 now we allocated this meeting now go on to the next one now we are at this meeting check if this room is available no it's still in use it will be next available at 18 check if this is then we use no it will be next available at 10 we need at 7 so this is the next room which is available and this is unused so assign that meeting here and it will be next available at 13th minute since we have used that room set this to 1 and the next available time is 13 now we assign that meeting go on to the next meeting now start time of that meeting is 8 check if this can be used no it will be available at 18 check if this can be used no it will be available at 10 check if this can be used no since no room is available this should be waiting we are waiting for the next available room so check the smallest of the waiting times 18 10 and 13 smallest is 10 so this meeting can be next assigned to room 1 so 18 comma 15 will be assigned here and what is the end time end time is the uh, current time 10 plus this meetings time 15 and when will this start it will start at 8 so minus 8 so this is equal to 17 so next available time is 17 since we assigned room 1 so increment it by 1 so this is 2 and next available time is 17 right so next meeting in room 1 will available at time 17 now we have assigned this go on to the next meeting next meeting is start time 9 check if this is available no it is available at 18 check if this is available no it is available at 17 check if this is available no it is available at 13 now we have to compare the next smallest time which the rooms will be available at check 18 17 and 13 13 is smallest so this meeting will take this room which is available at 13 so add 9 comma 12 here and what is the waiting time waiting time is current 13 plus this end time 12 and this will start at 9 so total is 16 so 16 is the new waiting time since we added one room add one to the room 2 so total meetings in room 2 is 2 and next available time is 16 so update the next available time and now as you can see we reached the end and we allocated all the meetings now our task is to find which room number has held the most meetings so where is that information available it is available at meeting count array so we have to count which room has the most number of meetings so we create a variable max which is initially 0 and we compare the values by updating the max so max will be 2 and which room has 2 all the rooms have 2 so if there are multiple rooms having the most meetings return the room with the lo lowest number lowest number is 0 so 0 should be your output which is the expected output so i hope you understood the logic now let's implement the same steps inside a java program coming to the function given to us this is the function name this is the input and representing the number of rooms and this is the input to do meetings array given to us we have to return an integer as our output representing the room number that held the most meeting so like we discussed we need two arrays so the first array we are going to use is going to represent the availability time of each room that is the next available time of each room for that we need a array of size n so this is the array which is going to keep track of the next available time of every room now we need another array which is going to store how many meetings a particular room held so we have to store that value for every room so this is the second array which is also of the size n which keeps track of the meeting count of every room now we need to sort the input meetings array in ascending order based on the start time of this third rule that if there are delayed meetings present the meeting which has an earlier start time should be given the room so for that we need to sort this based on the start times so we are sorting the array 
using the sort method and I'm using a comparator which is sorting a array object based on the start time in ascending order. Now we need to iterate through the meetings array from start to end. So we use a for loop using a for each loop. I iterate through one meeting at a time through the entire meetings array. Now let's calculate the start time and end time for this meeting. So the start time is present at the zeroth index position of this meeting which we are accessing and the end time is present at the first index position of a meeting which we are accessing. So for example, if you are accessing this meeting initially, this is the start time, so 0 will be stored here and this is the end time, 10 will be stored in this. Now let's use a for loop to iterate through the rooms where we have to assign this meeting, right? We have uh, two rooms available and we have to check both the rooms if they are empty or not to assign this meeting to that room. So using a for loop, I iterate from 0 through n. So I use a for loop which will iterate from 0 until n. So I will represent the room and we are starting at room 0 and we go until room n minus 1 because there are numbered from 0 through n minus 1. Now we are at room 0, right? So we have to check the next available time we can use a room 0 at. So using an if statement, so we are checking for room 0 initially, i is equal to 0, that is the room number, when that room 0 is available next. If it is less than or equal to the start time of the current meeting, it means we can assign this current meeting to this room i. So we are using this array to denote that room 0, we have assigned one room. So we do plus plus for room 0. So for example, we have assigned this meeting to room 0 and room 0, the next available time will be the end time of this current meeting, right? So we are setting the end time of this current meeting to room availability time of i, where i is the room number. And now we will break so that we can go on to the next meeting because we already assigned the current meeting, we can go to the next meeting. And now, since we assigned this meeting, for the next iteration, this has to be occupied, right? Room 0, we have assigned to meeting 0. So room 0 should be occupied. So for that we'll use a boolean variable which will act as a flag. So I create a variable to check if we have found an unused room. So initially everything was empty and this will be false, right? We haven't found an unused room. So here we assigned room 0 with meeting 0. So this will become true now. So inside this if statement, I'm assigning this as true. It means the current meeting has been assigned to a room. And now we also have to check in every iteration that if we are not able to assign the current meeting to room i, so we have to use a if statement again to check if this is not true, we have to do something, right? We haven't assigned uh, that meeting to any room yet. So we have to check which room has the earliest availability next. So we create a variable min room availability type. So let me create that. So outside the for loop here, we create a variable which initially has a maximum possible value because we have to calculate the minimum possible time of all the rooms so that we can keep track of where the current meeting can be allocated to the next uh, shortest uh, waiting time. So if this is true, we will assign this variable with the uh, room availability time of room i and we also have to keep track of the number, right? Which room number has next earliest waiting time. So I create another variable and assign the current room number to that uh, minimum available time room. So this is the room number. So create this variable outside. So outside the for loop here, we create the variable and initially it is at room 0 because we start our search from room 0. That will be the minimum available time room as room 0. And this for loop will happen for all the rooms. And if we haven't found a vacant room, boolean variable will still be false, right? If it hasn't been set to true here, this will remain false. If it remains false, it means we are waiting for a room. So using a if statement, we are checking if this variable found unused room is still false. If it is still false, we have to assign the current meeting. We are still inside the outer for loop. The current meeting should be assigned to this variable, right? So we use these variables to assign the current meeting. So we update the current meetings time that is end minus start and we add it to the existing uh, meeting waiting time and we have to increment the count, right? So we increment the count and which room number which we calculated here, right? So this variable will store the room number which has the earliest meeting availability time. And at that index, we are incrementing the count. And this is the end of all the meetings. Now you have to check this meeting count, right? Because our task is to return the room number which has held the most meetings. So we create a variable. So we keep track of a max variable and then we need to iterate through this meeting count array, right? So let's use a for loop to iterate through the meeting count array. So I use a for loop which, which will iterate through all the rooms from 0 through n. And now we have to check for all the elements present inside this meeting count array and uh, check it with the max meeting count value. 
So if the current meeting count of the ith room is greater than the max meeting count until now, then we update max meeting count variable with this meeting count of i value. So max meeting count is equal to meeting count of i. And our task is not to return how many times the meeting was held in that room. So I create another variable max meeting count room. So this will be the meeting count room. And what is the meeting count room? It is i. So i is the room number. So this will be returned as our output. So in the end we are returning max meeting count room which has been assigned here once this condition satisfies. Now let's try to run the code. The test cases are being accepted. Let's submit the code. And a solution has been accepted. So the time complexity of this approach is big O of m log m plus m into n where n is the number of rooms and m is the number of meetings which are given in the 2D array. m log n because we are sorting the number of meetings in ascending order which will take m log m time and here we are using m into n nested for loops to calculate our output and the space complexity is big O of n because we are using two 2D arrays or you can say the space complexity is big O of n plus log n because uh, arrays.sort will internally use an array to sort the array using quick sort. So you can also mention that that the space complexity is big O of n plus log n instead of only big O of n. That's it guys. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.